Would you please stand for the reading of the scripture? I'll be coming from Psalms 137. Psalms 137. Excuse me, Psalms 139. I'll be reading from the New Christian Version. When you get there, say amen. Psalm 39 reads as such. Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up, you understand my thoughts from far away. You observe my travels and my rest, you are aware of my, all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know all about it, Lord. You have encircled me, you have placed your hand on me. This wondrous knowledge is beyond me. It is lofty, I am unable to reach it. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed to show, you are there. Mm. If I live in the eastern horizon or settle in the western limits, even there you have your hand on me. Your right hand will hold on to me. I'll say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night shines like the day, darkness and light are light to you. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Mm. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and yeah. wondrously made. Mm. Your works are wondrous, and I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret, yeah. when I was formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was for formless, and all my days were written in your book and plan for a single one of them. <coughs> God, how precious your thoughts are to me, how vast their sum is. If I counted them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Mm -hmm. When I wake up, I am still with you. God, if only you would kill the wicked, you bloodthirsty men, stay away from me. Who invoke your deceitful, your enemies swear by you falsely. Lord, I don't hate those who hate you and detest those who rebel against you. I hate them with extreme hatred. I consider them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concern. Mm -hmm. See if there's any offensive way for me. Lead me in the everlasting way. I have read Psalms 139 in entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his holy word. You may be seen.
You understand our thoughts and flaws. You know us better than we know ourselves. <coughs> Many are the afflictions of your people. But Lord, you deliver us from them all. <coughs> and this morning, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, this morning we pray, O oh God, that as we come to this house of worship, Lord, that whatever is on our heart that is not like Jesus, Father, we pray that you would purge it from us right now. Lord, you see our thoughts. You know what's on our hearts. Father, we pray this morning that you would move everything out of the way. Lord, that would hinder our worship. We pray and lift up this morning our pastor, dear Heavenly Father, that you will bless him as you see him standing in the need. <coughs> dear Lord, we pray also for this waiting congregation that you will bless them, O oh God, as you see them standing in the need. Then, O oh Lord, we pray for those this morning who know you now. <coughs> In the portent of their seat. Have mercy upon them this morning, dear Heavenly Father. Let them know, Father, that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. We pray for your word this morning, Lord, that it may truly be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us to walk in the path of righteousness. Lord, help us to not just to be hearers, but Lord, to be doers of your word. Then, oh God, we just ask that you would give us the strength to tell a dying world about a living Savior. What is yours to call and ours to answer? We look forward to a place somewhere in thy kingdom, Lord, where we can praise your name forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the last motion for us. Association Humphrey Lynn Scholarship Banquet will be Saturday, <coughs> January 23rd at the Bellmead Civic Center in Bellmead, Texas, 7 o'clock p.m. Please see Brother Roosevelt Huggins for ticket information. A sign-up sheet is in the foyer if you would like to request a copy of your 2021 financial giving statement. And lastly, the Colleen Sprint of the NAACP is celebrating Black History Month on February, Friday, February 11th, here at Greater Peace. The NAACP will be celebrating our Black educators with a focus on Mrs. Alice Dow, who was Colleen ISD's first Black female principal, and Doc Jackson, who was Colleen ISD's first black principal. Again, that will be held here at Greater Peace on February 11th. Thank you. Those are all of my
10 seconds Sunday morning. We thank God for being in this place at this time. Wasn't well, promised to us, but he decided to wake us up tomorrow. He started us on a brand new
before leaving the church today. Is that all right? Yes, sir. COVID, according to Advent Health, we are on the board. COVID is really kicking up in this area. Guard well. Pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to those folks who are around you. If by any chance you come in contact with anyone, by all means, find a way to get tested. Thank you. I will have something else at the end of the service that I need to talk about, and I'll do it at that time. Any questions? Let me reiterate, continue, let us continue to a very proper protocol. And I think we do that very well here in Great Phoenix. It's not that we're trying to do what God does, but only God can do what He does. But I do believe He allows us and He wants us to cooperate with what He's doing.
Let me pull this thing out so I can talk to you. It says on Friday evening, on Friday evening, January the 7th, I believe, Central Texas Revival Sport Association awarded this person a trophy for his great participation in the 2021 8 U football season. This person has also received a ring for being an offensive lineman at the AAU National Football Tournament in Little Rock, Arkansas. This person has been involved in sports year-round to include basketball, track, t-ball, golfing, bowling, <laughs> and one of my favorites, because I can't do it anymore like I used to, martial arts. This person is an honor roll student. Not only is he involved in all these sports, but he's also an academia. Academia. Amen. He's an honor roll student at Monarch Academy, Killeen, Texas. And one of the last comments that says here the family would like to give special thanks. All who pray for and support Brother Isaiah Kyle Chapman. Thank you. 
Would you please stand and join us in our hymn of preparation? 298 in the A, 339 in the B, 298 and 339. Just a little talk with Jesus. Oh, 
his son and his daughters. He has already promised that he will heal us. And whatever the thanksgiving or the petitions are, if they are according to his will, we have promised to grant them. Those things that 
must come to pass. God has given, uh, given man a tiny insight of some of those things that must come to pass. Uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, I'm going to read one verse here right now. In Revelation 1, 19, the Lord said to John the Revelator, uh, John the Apostle, chapter 1, verse 19 says, write. And when God says write, he says write. Therefore, oh John, write therefore what you have seen. Write what is that? And put the word right back in there. And write what will take place later. No doubt you have the answer to it. What or whom had John seen? In reading the book of Revelation, you'll find out that John had seen the glorified Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said the glorified Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, John didn't walk with him while he was in the flesh. Earth. Mm -hmm. John did walk with him as he recognized him as the God man. The one who was, this is how Jesus puts it in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 13, chapter verse 8. The one who was who is and who will be is none other than Jesus the Christ. Listen to what Hebrews 13 8 says. Jesus Christ, the same. Watch out, man. Yesterday, Jesus Christ, the same. Today, Jesus Christ will be the same forever. Mm -hmm. Then, going back a little bit to verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 19, he told John to write the things which, which are. You see, John got a panoramic view of the church. John was allowed to see the church as it was on earth during his day. And John was allowed to look down through the angels of time and see what the church was going to be in the future. Even in the day that we are in right now, John got a glimpse of the church. Praise God. But you know something? God is not finished right. with the church yet. Right. So, Peter, how do you know that? Well, I'll tell you how I know that. The church is still here. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. After 1900 plus years, the church is still on the scene. Mm -hmm. And then John was told, and Revelation 119, that third thing John was told, the things which shall be here after. Oh, yeah. Now that's what concerns me today. Those things, some of those things that will be here after. Now as you read and study the book of Revelation, you're going to find those things are <coughs> identified in chapters 4 through 22. Those things that's going to be hereafter. There are those who would tell us that 
those things that John saw in his vision in the book of Revelation, chapter 4 through 22, there are those who will tell us that many of those things have already taken place. Oh, Lord, I feel sorry for those who go on that premise. Because those things have not yet happened. Many of those things have not yet happened. You can go back in the areas of history and find a whole lot of atrocities that have taken place in the world today. But none of them reached the climatic point of what you find in the book of Revelation. Oh, you can go back and pick up on a whole lot of it. You can go back to the Noetic Flood days if you want to. You can go back to the time of Babel if you want to. You can go back to old Nimrod and his atrocities if you want to. All right, all right. Or you can walk it up through the Bible. You can go through the Jewish tribulation, I mean, the Jewish captivity periods if you want to. You can bring it up into what I consider modern day. Come all the way up the hill and build it if you want to. I said, if you want to come that far, bring it on. You can go beyond it, I'm you can go to what's going on today. I mean, there's a thing going on today that turns some of our hair gray. But that's nothing compared to what's going to go on. As we would say down in the woods, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> but going all the way beyond those things. John in chapter 21. Huh. Going beyond many of those things that will take place in our future. John goes beyond that. And in Revelation 21, chapter, well, yeah, 21, chapter 1. I mean, 21, verses 9 through 8. Let me just share those verses with you then. Um, you said, brother, well, thank you. Is that all? Yeah, that's the sermon. 21, 1 through 8. This is what John said. After all these things have happened, mm -hmm. I will go again. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. I will find it in my head and fathom that. The heaven and the earth passing away. But God said it's going to happen. After John said it passed away, and there was no more, no longer any sea, no longer any separation. Between God and his people. John says, I saw the holy city. Now look at the Jerusalem that he talks about, though. He's not talking about that Jerusalem over there in Palestine. Not that Jerusalem. But he said, I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem. We all like making you know. The new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Coming from whom? Coming from, from God. Notice how he describes it. Prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Let me let me let me share this experience. Some of y'all, y'all be able to witness this already too. I have never, I have never seen a good bride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said I have never seen a good bride. Have you noticed? On 
the day of that bride's potential union with that bridegroom, that bride is one of the most beautiful persons that you've ever seen. And they may not have been big forty. Pick it up on you. But that day, they're beautiful. When you say to her, now if your wife said to that, you better speak up. <laughs> yeah. In, let me read that verse of the And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. You do not know, and yes, you know, the church is spoken of in the Bible as the bride of Christ. That he is going to present to himself one day. She's going to be beautiful. Old thing might be over right now. There might be some spots. There might be some wrinkles. There might be some blemishes. But in that day, when the bride, which is the glorified church, I got to put that word back in there, you got to be the glorified church. For the Lord could, 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 could stomach what he sees now down here on earth to live in his presence forever. Mm. It's got to be the glorified church. Amen? John goes on to say, and I heard a loud voice. From the throne saying, Look, pay attention. God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. And they will be his people. And he goes on to say, And God himself will be with them and be their God. Someone wrote a book one time and talked about the silence of the Lamb. Said God now they, it, it appeared, it seemed God, the voice of God is silent right now. God is not speaking to man as he once spoke to man. You know why he doesn't have to speak to man as he once spoke to him? We have We have the scripture now. We have the indwelling Holy Spirit now to clear up fuzzy matters, to make clear, I'm talking about to the children of God here now, to make clear to us what the Lord is saying unto us. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God the Father. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God the Son. God the Holy Spirit can show us things that we can never see with our natural ability. That is something we just, we just can't see. You can't see the spiritual blessings of God through the natural channel that we have. It takes the working, the moving of the Holy Spirit to open these things up to us and to make them clear unto us as what God is talking about today. I can take your Silence, in many cases, as a 
indication that you are listening to what I'm saying. But let me just say this, don't listen so much to what I'm saying. Listen to what the Lord has already said. Well. And what he reiterated right now through his word. Okay? By the way, I am coming from the earth. If you got your book over to Revelation chapter 1, I mean chapter 21, start with verse 1, you read, you read right now with me, aren't you? Let me see where I left off. Where did I, where did I leave off? So I can tell you where I left off. Someone said, verse number 4. Well, with my superior sight here, I got to pick up on where verse number 4 starts. I guess I'll Go to the book. It says, and God shall. I heard you back there, brother. Thank you. Wipe away. Yes. He will wipe away every. Ignore him. Who did ignore his own for, for 
of mankind who said, no, God, I don't want what you have to offer. He referred to them in verse 8 and says, but the cowardly, those who wouldn't stand up for what they knew was right. The unbelieving, those who would not trust him. The vow, he said the filthy from the tree. The murders and the sexual immoral. Those who practice in that day, there were those who made from, you know, trees and stone, rocks, they made for themselves idol gods. Those who practice magic arts, the adulterers, and all liars. Look at this new thing coming. They will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning salt. The Bible describes this as the second death. You see, we came into this world dead in trespassing and sin. But the Lord has seen fit to give us a new lease of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we will not face what the Bible says here when it talks about the second death. We won't face that. Then who are you talking about? He said we won't face that. Well, the church is not going to face the second death. You see, after these things, I've come to a close. All the things that we've mentioned previously, uh, I'll start with just, I'll start with tribulation, but I'll start with tribulation period. Those seven years of horror and destruction. After these things have come to a close, God is going to bring in all things that he's always intended to bring in. Not going to be like Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and things were all right. At some point between Genesis 1 and 1 and Genesis 1 and 2, chaos took place. You know, don't look at me like that. You know what scripture says? The earth was born. It was without form. Something happened back then. Uh -huh. yeah. It ever since that something happened, the old tempter was let loose. Yeah. And he was in charge of bringing men down yeah. to his lower level. Yeah. You know the story of the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> you know what he said to Eve? <laughs> He wanted to know from Steve, did God say these things? Uh -huh. She said, yeah, he did. She told me he said more. But the old temple said to Eve, and Steve said, listen, said, these things are not really true. So because God knows that the day that you do what he said you should not do, you're going to be like him. You're going to know, you're going to know, you're going to know things. He didn't tell her she's going to know things that she shouldn't have known. Right. John says it's going to be different. This new heaven and new earth. They said, brother, you, 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 you're skipping over a lot of stuff. You're right, I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. Unless you want to be at the third block this evening, I ain't going to talk about that. Okay? <laughs> All right? You know what man did. Man, man sinned against a holy, against a righteous, against a loving God. And God made a promise. <coughs> in his word, through his word, that he was going to have to deal with man because of his 
atrocities. That's why the great tribulation has got to come in. That's why God is going to allow things to happen on this earth that men are going to cry out. They're going to be so terrible they're going to cry out. I said this before, I'm going to say it one more time. They're going to cry out and ask the mountains to follow us. They're going to ask the rocks to follow us. Because they want to hide from the wrath of the land. But if you think with me just for a moment, the Lamb came to this world. Well, He came into this world to give His life a ransom for the sheep. Mm -hmm. Did He do it? Yeah. He came to shed His righteousness. He came to pour out His precious. He came to allow his holy blood to flow down from his body, to flow down upon the earth. You see, in Jesus allowing himself to be crucified, Jesus was doing that which would later be used to purify this earth. He said, well, when is this earth going to be purified? Because it's sure it's not here by today. No, COVID-19 is running rampant all over this world. And no one seems to have the answer to how to deal with it. We come up with peace meals here, and peace meals there, and peace meals everywhere. Make it plain, Doc. Make it plain. Make it, make it plain. I said, one of these days, there is going to be a new heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One of these days, oh, Lord, there is going to be a new earth. One of these days, there won't be no more pain. One of these days, there won't be no more sorrow. One of these days, there won't be no more crying. One of these days, Looking down through the end of the time, 
time you were looking at the church. Because the church is going to be in glory yeah. with my father. Yeah. Aren't you glad about it? Yeah. Jesus made sure of that. That's why he was hanging on that cross. Ensuring that his father's will would be done. Yeah. And the father's will will be done. I don't care what man says. I don't care what man does. The father's will it's going to be fulfilled. That's, right. that's why I thank God. I said, that's why I thank God this day for the cross. Because it was at the cross. I said it was at the cross that all of these things were bundled up and taken care of and put in place to take place. And God has already said it was going to be done. If, now I'm going to put it this way, were I you and did not know Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my Savior, I would just Paul. I, I, I pushed the Paul button on my life. I, the Lord, let me start over with you. Oh, when you start over with him, you you're on the right track, you? <laughs> Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. Then I'm saying this in second or third person, something like that. I'm not talking about me now. I'm a saved person now. But there was a one time when I was not saved. I was lost, undone, and as I say, say, ugly. Because I had been through the fires and tribulation of walking with the Lord. You would say, no fire and tribulation in that. If you walk with the Lord, you're going to have some fire, you're going to have some tribulation. Okay? Don't think you float on this earth, don't you just going to float on the man of Eden. If you are a child of God, things are going to happen in your life that you think should never happen. Yeah. What are they going to happen? Yeah. You don't believe? Look around. Christians are going through some of the same thing that none Christians are going through. And it seems like Christians are going through the worst thing. Judge said, I saw it in a new earth. All these things are going to be done away with. Oh, you're going to see him. And he is. We're going to see him as he sees us. We're going to know him as he knows us. There may be someone here today, and you may have been in the church setting for a number of years. You may have seen him, pray prayers, moan and groan like others. You still not know Jesus as your personal Savior. Now is a good time. Now is a good time to make that renewed commitment to our Heavenly Father by way of God the Son, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. May we stand at the invitation to discipleship. To be extended because of the grace and the mercy of Almighty God.
You need to come and ask for confession time to time, good or bad. But sometimes we forget all things. I haven't come and ask for midnight service. I haven't done because of my legs, my backs, my knees. Well, I other day I was meditating myself. For, you know what the Spirit said to me? Spirit said, all those uh, agonies uh, and things go by, you have to learn how to say thank you. Yeah. You didn't say thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and all things are coming. What Jesus went through that cro cross <coughs> and all that pain and ag agony, and we need to say thank you. And I thank you for this church member. And Sister Melissa, constant heavy work. And she just uh, so nice to me. And I love you, Sister Melissa. And Brother Huggins is really doing a lot of things. Good job. And uh, he really did, does uh, helping a lot of things. I thank you, and I thank you, all the sisters are doing any good. And I thank you, and Pastor, and all this, uh, it's been two years of COVID, just two years. It really sometimes frustrates me. And um, I was gonna go drink it uh, earlier, but, People say, doctors say, COVID, and you better be careful. And I haven't gone, and things happen now. And I just want to say thank you, and thank you, and thank you, Reverend Gill. And I know long time, Reverend Gill has always prayed for me. And I know that. And Pastor, my pastor, Dave Molen, we, we're not coming close to all the time, but uh, he knows me and I know him. I'm his pastor. And we've been knowing over 40 years. But then I gotta learn how to say thank you. And thank you. And I just uh, see, when I sit down over there, I look to Sister Wood. I didn't know what Sister Wood just got lost so much weight and <laughs> looked, so, looked so thin. I said, Lord, just bless her. And she she need her. She need her. Lord to help her pray. And I just want her, Sister Wood to be a strong and just a I always pray for you. And I love you. And I I will always will will be pray and with you. And I thank you all the sisters and the great peace and among the, all the brothers. And I know Brother Barrett, I make you laugh, don't I? <laughs> thank you. And Brother Paolo, thank you. And all the, we don't have many deacons, but I love my deacons, all the deacons. And I hope Sister Joan be well and soon come home. And I just want to say thank you. And God bless you. Thank you, Reverend. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. You have a hallelujah happy new year.
to Sister Gilmore. Pastor, I have to say uh, thank you for that message <coughs> this morning. Um, this, this past week or two, I've been uh, researching stuff on the uh, internet, uh, stuff like atrocity, uh, Emmett Till, Black Wall Street, Rosewood, and stuff like that that had, had to do with us in the past. And, and at some point, I, I got to have to watch yourself because I say, Lord, why? Why? Why do we have, why over the history, over the years, centuries, when is it going to end for us? Why do we have to go through and, and it seems like people just got away with murder and, and all of this stuff. So you have to watch yourself because you can get caught up in that stuff. And so to hear your message this morning was particularly special for me. And I hear what the Lord is saying concerning all of that stuff. That one day uh, it's going to be over. So, so thank you for the message this morning. Uh, several months ago, probably October, um, I came before you and I asked prayer for one of my childhood friends, friends since we were second grade. Uh, his mother, they had given her up and gave her days, and I came before you and, and asked prayer for he and his family, his mother, and God uh, gave her more than days, he gave her months. And so this morning I looked at my phone and he had texted me at about four o'clock this morning. And about one o'clock she went on home uh, to be with the Lord. So I'm asking prayer for the Curtis family. Y'all keep them in prayer. One thing I know that with uh, this church when you ask prayer, uh, y'all take it seriously. And that's why I come and ask for prayer with God. Because he answers prayer. Thank you again, Greater P. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, when I was a little boy, I used to say that word and I couldn't even spell it. <laughs> but I knew the meaning of it. So right now, I just want to say hallelujah again yeah. to all of you. 
the Humberland Banquet, as you've heard, has been canceled. But we're still taking donations. So, give generously, and we will make sure that they go to the place that they need to be. Also, as you look around on the outside, inside of the building, you see a lot of renovation going on. Have a little patience with us. <laughs> because a lot of the stuff we can't get taken care of in one day. This old edifice has been here for about 27 years, maybe 28. Still look good. There's still some more renovation going on in this place. So, what we would like for all of you to do, when you fill out your envelope, there's an area on that say building fund. Whatever amount you want to put in there, oh man, we would be so happy to see that. Because there are some areas that need some additional funding. need additional funding. We don't want to take from the church's fund. We as members want to make sure that we keep this old edifice rolling along just like it has been for the last 27 years. One of the areas is a computer. We need to upgrade. We have to. The secretaries, the technologists, when they come in, they're behind the curve when the, from the start. We have to upgrade. So again, on that little envelope, where it says building fund, or just put donation on it, we don't care. We use it. But anyway, I just want to say thanks to Greater Peace and all of you for your continued help and support. And I know the pastor, thank, thank you. Because he talked to us about it. And he probably talked to you out there about it. We thank you. And we're going to continue to make sure that we do everything that we can do in order to make greater peace the place that you want it to be. Thank you to God be the glory. And hallelujah. Amen. I was there, but I still can't stand and look at that little piece there. I just, I just felt praying for one day. Brother, 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 I I think that would suffice. It will be a souvenir. And that way we will have an account of how many tickets were sold. And then those who just want to give donations, by all means, please and do generous. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. Do they have anything else? For this, I guess it's still morning. This time for this day. We pray that the Lord will keep us as we come down from this place. Amen. Amen. If there is, this morning I mentioned two names. I think to took the moment for the for the bottle of the mayor was out with him, because he's back too. Amen. Amen.
and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. And the church said, together. Thank you.